Colorectal cancer is the fourth most commonly diagnosed cancer among adults in the United States. According to the CDC, each year about 150,000 new cases are diagnosed, making it the second leading cause of death from cancer in America. Today, a comprehensive look at colorectal cancer, early detection, the importance of routine screening and recurrence monitoring post-primary treatment. We start our discussion with Dr. Roberto Rodriguez Risca, colon and rectal surgeon at Texas Oncology. Let's take a look. The important thing about this disease is that it is not only preventable, but is curable if diagnosed early. Colon cancer is seen more often in men. One out of 22 men will be diagnosed with colon cancer, while women, uh, the incidence is one in every 24. Also, uh, colon cancer is more prevalent in uh, African-American uh, individuals, and African-American individuals also have onset of colon cancer at an early age. What we have seen lately is that younger patients are being diagnosed with colon cancer. The answer as to why patients are getting colon cancer at younger age is because the stability of the genetic structure of younger individuals is breaking down. At 43, colorectal cancer was the last thing on Missy Musa's mind. Symptoms started off minor. However, as things progressed, a colonoscopy revealed she had a mass. Let's go to Missy for her story. I felt bloated a lot. All of a sudden I would feel nauseated for no reason. And then I started having to go to the bathroom four, six, eight times a day. Um, which is just not normal for me. I knew for a while that things were off, but I didn't know really what it was. And then I started noticing some blood um, and again passed it off. And I was like, well, I'm going to the bathroom so much, it makes sense. And as I was walking into the bathroom, I knew something was very wrong. And um, I sat down and there was blood everywhere. So I went into the emergency room the emergency doctor said this is not emergent. It was probably internal hemorrhoids or possibly colitis, but we recommend you um, you go ahead and check with the GI guy. Thank God he was a proactive doctor. So he said the CDC is now considering lowering the age of you know, having screenings from 50 to 45. Let's go ahead and just do one and let's just rule it out, things out. And I could tell when I woke up, the doctor was really serious. And I was like, hmm, and he said, let's bring your husband back. So my husband came back and um, the doctor walked up to me and he said, we found a mass. And so I looked and I said, what, mass? And um, does that mean cancer? And he said, yes. Shock. And I thought of my kids. So, and especially when he told me that if I wouldn't have um, come at, at that time and I would have waited for when the CDC tells you at 50, I, I would have left a 15 and a 14 year old without a mom and my husband without a wife. The United States Preventive Services Task Force has released recommendations that screening should be started at age 50. Most recently, the American Cancer Society has released recommendations to start screening at a younger age, that is 45. Patients with higher risk of colon cancer that should be evaluated sooner include patients that have a family history of colon cancer or polyps. Patients that have a personal history of inflammatory bowel disease or have a prior history of uh, polyps. Heavy smokers, patients also that uh, heavily consume alcohol. African American patients as well. Incidents of newly diagnosed colon and rectal cancer cases have been dropping in the U.S. for those aged 50 years and older, in large part due to screening. Colorectal cancer screening tests might find cancer earlier when it's easier to treat. Tests to identify these cancers have been in place since before the 1990s. As for the current screening options? Currently, the gold standard still remains a uh, screening colonoscopy. 
Other methods of screening are FIT test or fecal immunochemical test for blood in the stool that are not readily visible. Also uh, tests that can find uh, DNA fragments uh, in stool. Imaging modalities like virtual colonoscopy uh, and other x-rays, barium enema, flexible sigmoidoscopy. The advantage of stool test is that it can be done under privacy uh, of their home. It's uh, easy to do and convenient for the patient. Companies like Clinical Genomics are focused on improving the sensitivity and accuracy of screening tests, as well as providing test options that may lead to early detection of residual and recurrent colorectal cancer in patients who have undergone primary treatment. Insure One is a fit test that detects blood in stool, which can be an indication of lower GI disorders, such as diverticulitis, UC, polyps, colorectal cancer, or even large adenomas that bleed. The samples can be collected by the patient at home using a water-based collection method. If you have used a paintbrush, you can use the Insure One test. I was scheduled for my surgery, and then that's when I found out it was stage two. We were very fortunate to find out I had no metastasis. I was very lucky I found it as early as I did, because if I wouldn't have had a bleed, he said I probably would have waited till 50, and it would have been a very different conversation, as in they probably would have had to call in hospice. For patients like Missy, once you've been diagnosed, it's imperative to follow a five-year follow-up plan. Recurrent colorectal cancer occurs in 30 to 50% of patients. 80% of recurrences are found in the first two to three years after surgery, and 95% of recurrences are found within five years. For surveillance, we often use uh, CEA levels which is uh, carcinoembryogenic antigen, which is an antigen that is seen um, in colon cancer patients. There are other tests available, new technology that is detecting free circulating DNA. It's a liquid biopsy. Free circulating DNA uh, is very helpful to assess adequacy of treatment. It is far more sensitive than the CEA. There are liquid biopsy laboratory services available in the United States, such as Colvera, that identifies circulating tumor DNA designed to detect both residual disease and recurrent colorectal cancer. These technologies address two important points, detection of residual disease post-surgical resection and surveillance of recurrent CRC after primary treatment. The take-home message here is, the importance of screening for colon cancer. It's a curable disease, uh, it's a preventable disease. It can strike anyone, and it's striking those of us under 50 the hardest. I believe so strongly to get screened. Even if you have no symptoms, get screened before you're 50. You can catch it early, and you have a really good chance to survive it. I want to thank both of my guests for this insightful conversation on the importance of early screening for colorectal cancer. Remember, early detection is key. For more information on what to discuss with your physician, please visit clinicalgenomics.com, and you can always visit our website, thebalancingact.com.